Okay, so uh, good morning everybody. It's Chris here, the Blind Wood Turner, and welcome back to the workshop. So, uh, I'll cut straight to the chase now because it's, it's quite an important video for me. Uh, and the topic is helping others less fortunate than ourselves. Uh, and I know all us makers, uh, we really step up to the plate when we're asked to do something for charity. Uh, and in this instance, uh, a gentleman got in touch called Scott. Uh, and he asked me to make something for a charity auction for a very special little girl called Lily. Now Lily uh, was born 11 weeks premature uh, with many complications uh, and just to quickly go through a few that I know of she was born with cerebral palsy uh, she has since developed epilepsy uh, and seizures she had a kidney removed because of a tumour the size of a baby's head, that's when she was a couple of years old I think. Uh, she can't eat on her own, she can't swallow, if she's lay on her back uh, she can't roll over and things like that. So uh, the the auction is to raise money for a, a device called an UPSI. Now this, I don't know if it's a chair or anything, obviously you know you'll have to uh, consider that I've, I can't see the pictures of it or anything but it's a device to help Lily gain a bit more mobility and it assists her to be in a bit more of an upright position uh, with the help uh, from uh, parents, guardians, carers etc. So she sounds like an amazing little girl uh, and of course uh, being asked to make something for this auction it's a no brainer. So what we're going to do now is uh, I've been asked if I can do you know my my uh, own particular brand of turning they'd love that so uh, this is going to be power carved and, and coloured and textured uh, and maybe uh, uh, it'll raise a lot of money for Lily's uh, mobility aid. So we're going to move over to the lathe I think I've got another piece of beach on here we'll measure it and then we'll crack on so thank you very much everybody uh, so let's get turning okay everybody let's just let's just give this a quick measure 10 and 1 8 inches so it's 10 by 2 and 3 16 inches N near n nearly two and a quarter uh, so it's 10 by 2 and a quarter ish, give or take. Take measure, turn off. So, what I'm going to do is just get my little cup adapter here. Let's move that to the rest of the way. Just add a bit of support just while I check that this is. It's on a face plate folks. Now this bowl blank has got a bit of cupping to it. So I'll leave it at that and then we'll just be able to true it up a little bit. So just have a feel there. Okay. So Feel for my face plate here, over here, there it is. So, yet again, it is a bit of a cold, damp, miserable day. Uh, just making sure I've got my a few bits to hand early on here now. So, a couple of tools on the go. Yeah, pretty cold and miserable, but that ain't gonna ruin our fun and getting this done. So, let me just feel roughly for centre. And get this screwed up. Nice and gentle.
And I think what happened there, it stole because as I came out to the edge and it met that cupped area, obviously it was just deeper in, a deeper cut, so it just bogged down for a second. So, cool. Well, I'll get this trued up and then I'll be back. Okay, and uh, I've got my little mortise dubra here, so I'm just going to feel for that and we'll get a score line in here now. Here we go. All being well. Got a nice score line in there now for my uh, jaws. That's lovely jubbly. I'll remove this tail stop for the time being now. And I need to use the parting tool to define the outside edge. Okay, so the next step is now to start bringing this uh, bowl around. So, feel for where I need to start. Let's take this corner off, pull it back a bit so it doesn't just so it doesn't scare me. Okay, everybody. So what we've got here now is the the shape of the bowl that I like uh, and the mortise there done. Uh, I've got the prox on here, angle grind it with the sabre tooth carbide disc on. So I'm going to power carve all this now. I'll be wearing my uh, power cap uh, to keep my lungs nice and clear because uh, this will kick up a lot of dust. It's quite dusty this. So uh, we're going to crack on. I'm going to, the power of the lathe is disconnected, the spindle is locked and I'm just going to put a glove on my left hand uh, just in case I inadvertently uh, forget where my hand positioning is uh, and just touch my, my hand. So we're good to go. Okay folks, so that's the clean up nearly done now with this 50 grit Rolock uh, bristle brush. So it'll just take another minute or two uh, and then uh, I can think about uh, putting my spiral in the base uh, and then getting some paint on. Now the uh, small wheel texturing tool, put that down a little bit. There we 
exactly about right. Find my position. Feels good about there. Let's go. Have a little bit of a spiral detail in there now. Okay, folks, so what we've got now is some black uh, acrylic paint. So we're going to give this a, a coat of black as a base. So I've got the headstock and the inverter uh, and the bed protected. So just feel for where I am. And then I've actually unplugged the lathe just in case I inadvertently uh, hit the start button and get a load of plastic caught in everything. Okay, so the, the black base coat is dry uh, and you don't need to put more than really one decent coat on because this rust effect paint is so well covering and it has its own texture and uh, sort of like thickness that uh, just one coat of black base is probably enough. So the, the base colour is the, the bigger pot which is good for us blind holes, helps us remember and the verdigris uh, which I will dry brush on uh, is the thinner pot so I don't need the thinner pot for now and the smaller brush so uh, we're going to start applying this rusty top coat so I have just in the in the back there I've got uh, a, a pot of water just to have the brushes in to help clean up uh, during the work so just feel for where you need to be uh, I'll uh, zoom in a bit closer later and just start hope you're getting that I'll just try and zoom in a bit for you uh, I think it's that one just hold it for a few seconds. Is that better? So, getting this rust paint on. So, you just work around methodically. A bit of a stippling action works well and a bit of a, a normal brushing motion uh, and we'll work all the way around that so I'll be back when that's done right then next step is I've got the the verdigris finish here so I'm just going to give that a bit of a, a bit of a stir and then we need to be dry brushing it on the top of this uh, base base coat so that's had a good stir now a little bit of tissue just to wipe that cool so less is more with this process so I've got a spare piece of card here so I'm just going to dip that in and then brush most of it out and then we can start dry brushing and working our way around so it's just catching all the high spots that's really what we're trying to do okay flipped it around now and it's held in the jaws on the chuck so we're going to face this off feels a bit punky in places where that a bit of an inclusion there feels a bit punky there uh, so yeah I'm going to trim it off uh, and then just start thinking about the next step. Uh...
So, find the centre. My position is there. Pull back a little bit. Okay, so I am going to hollow this uh, portion out partially. Uh, I was thinking about carving this, but not applying any colour. Uh, let me let me just hollow this out, just while my brain's trying to process what I've just said, and if my brain likes it. Anyway, let's just do this bit. Right, so we're going uh, freehand here at the minute with the camera. So I've got the depth, first of all, the depth gauge is in. And there's not, you know, there's only about a quarter of an inch gap there. So this, this area here feels quite punky. Let me just get my bearings, right? This area feels quite punky and there's this inclusion here. So I'm just wondering what to do. Uh, regarding uh, texturing and carving so uh, I'm definitely gonna power carve this portion uh, and I'm just wondering what would happen how would it look if I brought the carving into there the only one way I'm gonna find out I suppose Okay, so I've given the inside now uh, a texture with the sabre tooth. So what, as, I, as I'm working now, what I'm going to do is clean this up, and then I'm just going to turn a little uh, portion in the bottom, just make it smooth uh, and define it a little bit. Uh, but I'll just check with the depth gauge again. Uh, but what I'm going to do first of all is I'll clean it all up with the. Uh, bristle brush so uh, I need to just swap that over so I'll be back in a sec okay folks so here's the finished project for uh, the auction for Lily uh, I've decided to just uh, apply a couple of coats of sealer and, uh, and leave it at that uh, so the the power carving with the sabre tooth uh, gives it obviously some deep grooves and uh, flutes and channels whatever you want to call them uh, but the the 3m abrasive bristle brush that imparts as it clean it up that imparts its own kind of texture as well which is nice it's a bit it's not like smaller lines and score marks but uh, that's really cool so I'll just show you. I decided to leave the inside of this hollowed out portion uh, all, all carved and knobbly. I really like the feel of it. And then if we flip over onto the other side, we have the rust and verdigris effect. So uh, there you go, folks. Uh, yeah, lots and lots of fun. I'm really loving this uh, power carving. Uh, and I, I have lots of ideas. Uh, it's just getting them out onto video. Uh, 
but every time I do it I think oh yeah uh, mm, I'd love to do a video like that uh, but because this was for a charity I didn't want it to be sort of like a trial run video or something and then it ended up not being good I wanted, I wanted to get something made so we can get it off to Scott uh, and try and get the money for it so uh, I shall practice uh, in my own time I regarded this as a quite a serious thing to do so anyway I think it feels amazing power carved colored textured uh, and I think I, I still think it might be beach but uh, beach or realm one of the two nice little inclusion so there you go so uh, I'll just uh, remount the camera and uh, I'll finish off to camera okay folks so there you have it uh, a lovely textured and coloured bowl as promised for the auction for Lily the girl with some serious uh, health issues uh, and we wish the whole family uh, all the best in everything they do so hopefully we can get that uh, upsy uh, aid for Lily uh, I'll get Nicola to put a link into the the website or the the auction page uh, all the details will be there anyway if you want to help support this great cause that uh, cause this great cause uh, anyway so that's another absolutely fantastic day in the workshop of the blind wood turner uh, so thank you all so very much uh, please I'd appreciate it if you give it a, a like uh, and leave a, a nice comment it's always good to interact with you guys uh, so there you have it so keep on turning everybody and I'll catch you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye. Just feel for the remote now. There it is. Ooh, bye.